Today I'm going to be going over real-time obstacle avoidance. So last week I went over how to use the navigation mesh so your object can navigate around level elements that are static. But today I'm going to be going over how to set something up so that your object can navigate, navigate around something that's not static. So this could be a player or it could be a car or it could be another AI. Anything that's in the way that's not static but you want your object to be able to avoid. So let's go ahead and set this up. So the first thing you're going to need to go ahead and do is come over here to the world panel and you're going to scroll all the way down until you come to obstacle simulation. So we're going to come down here and change the type to raise from none to raise. Now you see we have a different type up here. I've found that raise work the best. All right. So there we go. So what we're going to go ahead and do to make sure this works because right now this is not going to work as you can see. Just enabling it doesn't make it work instantly. So what we're going to go ahead and do, select our uh, object, the object that has the Seeking Actuator. And if you want to see the tutorial on setting up the fo uh, Path Follow Seeking Actuator, steering, sorry, I always get that mixed up. Uh, I'll have a link in the description to go ahead and watch that tutorial if you haven't seen that because uh, this is based on that tutorial. So you're going to want to go ahead and see that. Anyway, let's continue on. Let's go ahead and come over here to the physics panel and we want to go ahead and click here and you're going to see create obstacle. Now that we've done that, Blender is going to consider this as an obstacle. So that means that it's going, if AI comes along towards it, it's going to try and avoid that. And this also is going to try and avoid other objects that are obstacles. All right. So we also need to create this as an obstacle. Now, this is not actually going to try and move and avoid anything since it doesn't have the steering actuator so this the actual avoiding only affects stuff when it has a steering actuator so now that both of these enabled you see we have the radius we're just going to leave that for now and we'll press play and see if this works so as you can see it works right here and avoids it really nice and simple so you'll see we have a few things we haven't gone over quite yet like what's the level height so the level height from what I've been able to find out is the maximum height of an object. So, or sorry, the average height of an object. So uh, as you can see with these cubes, this is actually about the perfect height. Because if you go, go over here to the dimensions, it's a two by two by two. And the height here is set to two. So the average size of your object is going to be two here. So it's set it to two, which is quite good. So this means if I have an object up here and I have never uh, uh, have this up here and we have like two floors and this is trying to navigate to something else, it's not going to see this object down here. Let's get rid of this. It's not going to look at this object when this one's coming along here, driving along here. It's not going to see this object here as a obstacle. Now, if we set this really high, it would say this is really high. And this would drive along and it would say, oh, this obstacle here. So it would go around nothing. So you're going to want to make sure that you set this correctly for objects. So leave it on two. It's around about good. Um, yeah. All right. So there we go. And down here we have the radius. So this is basically the radius. It makes a round circle or a cylinder circle around it. So it will be, let's say, add a circle as you can see here this is kind of what it's doing so if we set it to two this is about the size um, so that's what you're going to want to set it to but a way you can visualize this is a, a little tiny um, python a little bit of python you can do and this is going to help you to do that so we can easily go ahead and do that all we've got to go ahead and do is go to tutorials for blender uh, dot com I'll put a link in the description and we want to go ahead and find that so you want to go ahead and come to this website and you want to go ahead and uh, copy this code or write it down and or if you have basic thing of python just just write down this code it's really simple um once you've done that um let's see what you want to go ahead and do is create a new text file here and you just want to go ahead and write this down and once you've done that what you can go ahead and do is go always then add a python then you're going to go ahead and connect this up. Then we're going to select this text and we're going to go always active. So this is going to run every frame. All right, 
so you see here it's not working the reason for that is we need to go ahead and click visualize over here so now you can see it's actually visualizing correctly now if we were to go ahead and disable the script it doesn't visualize correctly so it's kind of annoying i'm not sure why this happens but you're just going to have to go ahead and do that so you can go ahead and learn how to do that script uh, from that website there'll be a link again as i just said before but as you can see it's visualizing correctly and if we were to go ahead and change the obstacle size of this object to two as you can see it's displaying as a bigger circle so there we go that's how you set it up really simple really easy uh, except for that last little bit but that's how you set up real-time obstacle avoidance um but that's the basics of it so i hope this helped uh the person that i was asking in the comments there you go done easy